Welcome to a long overture episode on the La Rapport. Today we will continue with part 2 of episode 17 and we look more in depth at driving a motor vehicle with the concentration of alcohol over the requirement or what is required or deemed acceptable in law. Welcome back. We continue to look at the road traffic ordinance and we continue to look specifically at driving or being in charge of a motor vehicle with alcohol concentration above the prescribed limit. As stated in our previous episode, episode 17, part 1, section 28, makes it an offense for a person to drive or attempt to drive a motor vehicle on a road or B, to be in charge of a motor vehicle on a road while the concentration of alcohol present in the breath, urine or blood is above the prescribed limit and in the previous episode we set out the prescribed limit in relation to breath, urine or blood. Section 28 subsection 2 provides a statutory defense to an offense of being in charge of a motor vehicle with the concentration of alcohol over or above the prescribed limit and the defense is if there was no likelihood that that person would have driven that vehicle and we explore that in the previous episode section 28 sub section 4 also sets out the penalty for someone who is convicted or who pleads guilty to an offense of driving with the concentration of alcohol above the required or the prescribed limit and section 4 states that in summary conviction that person could be fined one thousand dollars or six months imprisonment or to both and shall be disqualified of obtaining or holding a driver's license for a period not less than six months so the disqualification based on the language used in the ordinance is mandatory section 29 of the road traffic ordinance deals with breadth test and it says that a police officer in uniform who have reasonable cause to suspect that a a person is driving attempting to drive 
or in charge of a motor vehicle on the road has alcohol in his body or has committed a traffic offense whilst the motor vehicle was in motion b that the person was driving or attempting to drive or in charge of a motor vehicle on the road with alcohol in his body and that that person still has alcohol in his body or c that a person has been driving or attempting to drive or been in charge of a motor vehicle on the road and has committed a traffic offense while the motor vehicle was in motion now a few things jumped out immediately one it would appear from the wording of the ordinance that a police officer must be in uniform two that he must have reasonable grounds for suspicion and the ordinance sets out three scenarios in which the officer could form a reasonable suspicion in my respect for submission that list is not exhaustive and most importantly we see in each scenario the word road being mentioned that's very important and in my respectful submission to you road means in this context a public road or a public thoroughfare so a person in his driveway in charge or driving his vehicle on his private property would not commit an offense under the ordinance even if the concentration of alcohol in his body is over the prescribed limit now the ordinance section 29 goes on to say that subject to section 32 a police officer may require may require a person driving or in charge of a vehicle in any of the three scenarios previously mentioned to provide a specimen of breath for breath tests and subsection 2 also states that if a person driving a motor vehicle involving an accident and the police officer has reasonable grounds to believe that he was driving or attempting to drive the vehicle with alcohol in his body over the prescribed limit then the officer could require that person to provide a specimen of breath for breath tests however in regard to section 32 that person only could be required to provide a specimen if permission is granted by a medical practitioner because section 32 
deals with a person at a hospital so if a person is at a hospital as a patient and the police officer suspects that he has driven or that he was in charge of a vehicle um, prior to his hospitalization maybe he was involved in an accident and that the concentration in his of alcohol in his body may have um, surpass the prescribed limit a medical practitioner must give permission for that patient to provide a sample of specimen to the police officer requesting it and the medical practitioner can object if he believes that the procedure or the requirement or the warning required portion to section 30 subsection 7 would be prejudicial to the proper care and treatment of the patient even if having complied with the request it is found that he is over the prescribed limit there are a multitude or there are multiple defense or defenses available to that person and so the risk of boxing oneself in relying on a procedural defense in my respectful view creates more danger than if one were to explore the wide range of defenses available if that person specimen was over the prescribed limit now subsection 5 of section 29 states that a police officer may arrest without warrant a person a as a result of breath tests if he has reasonable cause to suspect the proportion of alcohol in that person breath or blood exceeds the prescribed limit so if the police officer stops you or turns up on a, of an accident scene and you are brutalized and at the roadside tests the amount of alcohol in one's breath exceeds the prescribed limit the police officer could then arrest that person because that would be reasonable grounds for suspecting that that person has in his body alcohol concentration over the prescribed limit of course that person will be invited or taken to the police station and a second um, specimen will be required and then a third specimen so there will be two specimen taken at the police station 
and in the event that there is no proper working breathalyze as a machine at the police station then the officer could require that a blood or urine sample uh, being taken so section five also sets out at b a failure to provide a breath specimen could give the police officer reasonable grounds to believe that that person refusing have alcohol concentration in his body that exceeds the prescribed limit and in that scenario that person may also be arrested but it goes on to say that a person shall not be arrested by virtue of this section if he is a patient at a hospital now there are various defenses available to a person who gave a breath specimen for a breath test and it is found that the concentration of alcohol in his breath or in that breath specimen is over the prescribed limit some of the, um, the defenses available one the person could assert that he wasn't the driver so in a um, scenario there could be what is commonly known as a, a hit and run there could be an accident a driver leaves the scene the police investigate catches up with the person um, later require him to do a a um, breath um, test it comes back positive and the person could assert that he wasn't the driver maybe he could have just been a passenger in that vehicle and somebody else was the driver and the police may have gotten um, wrong information secondly he could assert where the incident took place is not a public place or a public road and as i said earlier if you're in your driveway on private property on a private road um then in my respectful submission even if a person concentration of alcohol in his body is over the prescribed limit he commits no offense under the ordinance then there are other defenses um, procedural challenges was the sample or the procedure taking the sample carried out correctly was the testing equipment operated accurately or correctly at the time and then there was a defense known as the hip flask defense and this is where alcohol in one's body could be attributed to alcohol consumed after the incident so for example a person may have an may have been involved in an accident he drives away from the sea he went so um, he went off drinking 
and the police caught up with him later and seeks to have him brutalized it shows up positive but he could assert that the alcohol in my body happened after the accident and at the time of the accident I was not um, um, drinking or I had not consumed alcohol now he may have to call export evidence but this is a legitimate defense here is where I will leave it for today thank you for watching I will see you in another episode